The data output stream and the data input stream are useful for writing binary data, but what if you want to write something that's not just an int or a double? What if you have a larger object that you want to write out? Of course, you could write out all of its constituents. You could write out all the pieces and then write code that would read in all the pieces. Uh, this process of writing an entire object to or from, a, writing it to a binary stream is called serialization, and then reading it back in is called deserialization. It turns out that Java, the JVM, has a built-in mechanism for doing serialization. There are actually several libraries for Scala that do this. We're going to deal with the default Java serialization. Uh, it's not the most efficient of, of serialization approaches, but it works across the JVM, and so it's, it's universally useful to you. So how do we do this? Well, in addition to having the data input stream and the data output stream, there are actually classes called object input stream and object output stream, which happen to have all the same methods that the data input stream and data output stream have with some additions. And the primary addition for input, for example, is read object. And for output, as you might guess, there is a write object. And those are on top of the methods that work with all of your kind of basic types. So how do we use this? Well, I would like to take our loan pattern. I'm going to copy these two methods. And I'm going to paste them. And I'm going to change. So instead of a with data output stream and a with data input stream, I'm going to change the D's to O's. And each of these becomes object, 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 and uh, object. OK. We'll do an import. See if this code is now happy. Seems to work just fine. OK, so what can we write out? How about, uh, let's make another little class here. New, we'll call it serialize student. And so I'm going to make, in addition to this, a little class called student inside of here. And the student is going to have a name, which is a string, will be a val, and another val for the grades, which is an array of int. And so it would be nice for us to create, say, a new student. Jim, who has grades of 67, 97, 23, 95, 86. Some numbers. We don't really care too much about what they are. Um, now I want to write out that student. And so I could say with object output stream, and we're going to call this student.bin. I want to write out that student. And so oh, I need to do my import of loan pattern dot underscore, unless I want to use longer names for everything. OS dot write object and I'm going to pass it our student. And then I run this. Oh, and it fails. What happened here? Well, it says not serializable exception. It turns out that in order to write something out to uh, a, an object output stream, it has to be serializable. Now, it turns out that string is serializable, arrays are serializable, ints, doubles, all of those basic types are all serializable. But if you make your own class, it has to extend serializable in order for it to be serializable. Basically, by extending that, and no, there are no methods. I didn't have to do anything else. 
but that sends a message to the JVM that you really want this to be serializable. You want it so that this can be written out. Okay, now let's try running our program, and it ran. If we look in the terminal, we have a student.bin file here. It's 128 bytes, and I can cat it, uh, or we could xxd it. You'll see there's actually, there are words in here. There's an iostream.student. Well, that was the name of this class because it's in package iostream and it's student. There is a Java Lang string. That's this string right here. Uh, yeah, uh, turns out this brackety stuff is the bracket i is for our array of events. But then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that isn't. So grades you can see in there, name you can see in here. But there's lots of binary data that doesn't, it's, it's not human readable because serialization does write out binary files for us. So that was pretty simple. So what are the rules of serializing? Well, obviously it has to be serializable and its contents have to be serializable. So if I make a class and I put something in here that's not serializable and then I tried to serialize it, I would get one of those exceptions when it got to that piece of the contents and tried to serialize them. Let's try to read this back in as well to make sure that we can get back our student. Val s2 equals a with object input stream of student.bin. One thing I should note, turns out that case classes are automatically serializable. So if you make a, cl a case class, you do not have to um, you don't have to extend serializable. If I had just added case on this, I wouldn't have to add the valves, but I would automatically get serializable as well. So I do my object input stream dot read object. Seems great. Okay, ran, did it work? Well, I could print line S2. Mm, well, I definitely got a student well, okay, so let's print their name. Oh, that fails. Why did that fail? Well, if we hover over S2, we see that S2 is an object. Of course, that's what read object returns. It gave us back an object. It turns out that object is basically equivalent to any ref in the Scala system, so you can switch between those two. But I didn't want an any ref. I didn't necessarily read an any ref. I read a student. But of course, we can't know that because this could have been some other file that had something completely different written in it. So I need to check to make sure that this is the right type and then do the appropriate thing. And I'm going to do that with a match here. And I'm going to match the case that I expect will happen should just give me back S. If it is anything else, so a case for an underscore, that means that we've failed here. Now, okay, I'm gonna do this the wrong way first. Not a student. And you'll see this is still unhappy. Why is that? Well, because S2 is now of type any. Remember, print line returns unit. And when you use a match as an expression, all of the different cases kind of need to return the same type, but this can't give me back a student, so it could return a subtype of this. Well, what are the subtypes of, of various things? Well, there's turns out there are, I can probably make this work in one of two ways, one of which is to use null. So when we looked at the entire inheritance hierarchy of Scala, by the way, this is not the right way to do it, but, but it works. The entire inheritance hierarchy of Scala, everything that's under any ref, and I said object was basically the same as, as any ref, is has a subtype of that is null. There is a null with a capital N type, and it is a subtype of all of those. And so if I give back a null here and a student here, student is the common type that, that works for both of them. But there is another subtype. So this wouldn't work, though, if instead of student, this were int, because null isn't a subtype of int. There is a type, though, that is a subtype of absolutely everything, and that is called nothing. But in order to get a nothing, because it turns out there is no instance of type nothing, 
what you do is you throw an exception, which is probably what this should do anyway. So I'm going to throw a new runtime exception. File didn't contain a student. So runtime exception is a built-in Java exception. We could create our own subtype of exception here. And because the throw basically gives back, it gives back nothing. Literally, it gives back absolutely nothing, which happens to be of type nothing because it throws an exception and totally exits this, this code. But now S2 is a student. We can print its name and we can run this and we get back Jim here. Okay, so that's a look at serialization we created a class, we made it serializable, we wrote it out to file, we read it back in from file, and we talked about some of the restrictions on it. We need to come back and we need to talk about what we do when we can't get around some of those restrictions or when, when we have problems, when we can't make everything serializable, what are we going to do in that situation?